<gasps> Welcome to Snatch Talk. Well, we're back again. Another year has passed and it's the beginning of Newcastle Drag Idol 2023. Last year we had a roller coaster ride as some of the best new UK drag performers fought it out to be in the final at Boulevard in Newcastle upon Tyne. A final which saw dance duo extraordinaire Bonnie and Ben Dover walk away with the coveted crown. Now it's time to do it all again, and I was there at Switch Bar to meet the contestants and film as much as I could of the performances. As usual, we had the return of regular host and judge Ophelia Balls, regular judge and the queen of Team Palmo herself, Penetration, and of course, the comedy queen, legend, people's princess, and all-round icon herself, her words, not mine, Miss Rory. But where was previous Judge Rusty? Well, she's off on another tour, and instead we saw Drag Idol alumni, superfan, Vampers Tits Judge, and regular Idol guest Plastique rise to the rank of regular judge, and they were greeted with cheers from the audience. So, what are the judges expecting from the competition this year? Well, Ophelia would like to see something traditional and modern, Jack wants to see talent, Penny wants them to tell a story, and Rory wants to see someone with the spirit of Layla Sagittaria, the unhinged humour of Stacey Wrecked, the showmanship of Bonnie and Ben Dover. It's a tall order, let's see if we get it. The winner of Drag Idol 2023 will receive a range of prizes, including £300 in cold hard cash, a jewellery package from Rubies, a creation from Funky Foam Creations, and a place on the Northern Pride main stage. Oof! So, how many contestants do we have this year? Well, I heard organiser Chris Howe had been inundated with hundreds of applications that eventually got narrowed down to 22. Ugh, that's still a lot to get through in just one night, so much so that he even asked Rory to keep things brief. Chris Howe came over to the dressing room at Boulevard on Friday night and he's like, oh yeah, 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 Rory, um, yeah, can we just like, make it quite brief on Sunday because um, yeah, we've got a lot to get through. No, Chris, I've got a lot of things I need to fucking say, and I'm gonna say it. Should have expected that, Chris. Now, to help the judges get through all the contestants this year, a new scoring system has been devised. After each number, the judges will vote with their thumbs to show how they feel. Either thumbs up, to the side, or thumbs down. If a contestant gets all thumbs up, then they're automatically through to the next round. <laughs> As the bar started to fill and fans waited eagerly for the first performer, I got to speak to Penny T about the upcoming competition. Well, here we are, another year of Drag Idol, and I'm here with wonderful, wonderful recurring judge, dare I say, the nice one, Penny T. The nice one? <laughs> well, I felt well, like I was a bit of a bitch last year. I, I'm going to say you were, however... <laughs> When you've got Miss Rory and Jack Plastique in the lineup, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, ca I can't argue with that because let's face it, it's three cunts on a stage where one, two of them are the bigger ones, and not weight wise because that's definitely me. <laughs> but no, so how are you feeling about this year? Are you excited? Always excited. Have no idea what to expect anymore. I was sat at home the other day thinking about this is the ninth competition I've judged. I know, nine. And I was like, there's been the ones that have won have had something for themselves. So 2014's October and 2016's Octavia both had that alternative. Yeah. Then you had, you know, Layla with All Stars and Gucci Gabor, they yeah. brought the glamour. You had Gladys and Dragon and the Whale that were literally batshit crazy. <laughs> yes. uh, Frida was very political. Yeah. And then Charitza and Bonnie and Ben knew how to tell a story. And to me, <laughs> all, all aspects of drag are absolutely perfect. And, and everyone that's won has deserved to win. Yeah. But the ones for me that can tell a story and literally make me wet myself laughing on stage, they're the winner. Yeah. They're the winner. No, I think that's sound advice because they are that. Oh, all the people that have won have been incredibly talented. Absolutely. But so I was going to ask you what you're actually looking out for this year and obviously telling a story. But uh, have any of the contestants that you've seen upstairs caught your eye so far? 
Do you know what? I'll be honest, there are some absolutely stunning queens and kings that I'm looking out there at. The thing with you can look absolutely stunning, and this is no shade, but it is as well. Um, you can look as stunning as you want to. We all know Paige Turner does my makeup. Thank you, Paige T. Uh, but you can have not great makeup. You can have not the best outfits. But you can still win this competition by being somebody that can get on a stage and perform. That's what we're looking for. You know, it's, is it still a drag contest? Well, yes, that's what we call it. But what we're looking for now is just people that are entertaining. It's entertaining. It's more like a talent show now. Yeah. And it works. It absolutely works. And that's why it's been going for uh, quick maths here. <laughs> Nine, no, no, 10... <laughs> 10, 17 year, 17 year. I'm sure the first one was 2006. Like Chris Howe had hair at the start, didn't he? He did, yeah. he did. Yeah, and I wasn't even born. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant. I'm hoping to speak to you later on in the competition once we've seen some things, but thank you so much for Lovely speaking to me, girl. Benny. <laughs> Team Palmo. At last, it was time to get the show on the road with the first of the night's 22 performances. Now, while I recorded a lot more of each performance, and there's certainly a lot more to say about each of them, I'm going to keep things brief. You'll be able to watch the full show and every performance on the official Drag Idol video on Chris Howe's YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it will be linked in the description below when it becomes available. First up, we had Phoebe Loren from Siam, who showed tremendous bravery by not only being the first act, but also singing live, which, as we know, is always a gamble. I drove all night to get to you. Judge Penny sympathised, saying that it's not easy going first, but that the two songs I Drove All Night by Celine Dion and the Chicago Cell Block Tango didn't quite go together. Plastique agreed and said that rather than driving all night, Phoebe should have saved the petrol. So what was the verdict? Only one thumb up from Rory, no less. You know what, Phoebe? I quite enjoyed it, actually, because I like a bit of live singing. Right? Yeah. Lucky for you that the only person whose voice matters is also the kind of person that will disagree with everybody else. <laughs> Let's see if she gets through at the end of the night. Next up, we had Cherry Bomb from Peter Lee, who came out swinging, dishing out cherry sweets and their finest energetic dance moves, with a very well edited track, I might add. Cherry had a fierceness that the audience fell in love with. Rory said she loves when an artist introduces themselves and makes their mark, and Cherry certainly did that. <laughs> However, she felt the lip sync was a little lost to the choreography. Penny pointed out that the audience loved her and that she'd gotten her name out there, much like a certain contestant from last year. You knew that was coming. The verdict? Three thumbs up! We'll be seeing Cherry next week. Like Cherry, another regular of the Bobby's Open Drag Nights was up next. Non-binary sensation Saturn addict hit the stage to show their range of talents from live singing to hula hooping. Well, wow. As soon as their hoop was out, that could have been phrased better, the audience was hooped. I mean, hooked. <laughs> This is one you're going to need to see for yourself on the full video. Plastique compared them to Grace Jones, describing the performance as nothing short of perfect, and Rory agreeing that the only way to improve it would be to have the hoop on fire. <laughs> the verdict? Two thumbs up and a meh from Penny. Controversial. What the f Dixie Sucks was up next, and this is someone who I personally class as one to watch, as I'm always impressed by their drag and performances at the Open Drag Night. Tonight, they gave us a Legally Blonde-themed number, taking us through the five stages of grief. Dixie is now in the second stage of grief. Anger. I'm feeling very venomous and angry. Who is 
Rory pointed out what a wonderful storyteller they were, describing the number as well put together and executed, and Penny agreed, saying that she reminded her of 2020 contestant Claudia Gabor. Plastique disagreed though, stating that Claudia has never been that skinny, and that the number was too stop starty, and that they found themselves bored. The verdict? Two thumbs up, and a meh from Plastique. Next up was one we were all waiting for, the return of Costa Fortune, a contestant that you may remember unfortunately, and perhaps unjustly, didn't make it past week one last year. Well, how the tables have turned, as Costa wowed both judges and audiences alike, with a sensationally funny and well-edited number about a librarian with a penchant for royal scandal. I suspected he was referring to my recent loss of virginity in an old woman. <laughs> She liked horses quite a lot and treated me not unlike a young stallion. Oh my, the judges loved it, Plastique giving Costa 10 out of 10, and Rory giving a very rare standing ovation. But what was the verdict? Would Costa Fortune be going home week one again? <laughs> of course not, with three thumbs up, we'll see her in week two. Elastique had to follow that, and did so with a There's Something About Jamie themed performance. Rory was the most critical, saying that the choreo was a bit clunky and that they didn't finish many lines, describing it as borderline stand and sing. Plastique said that they saw a lot of themselves in the number and that they loved it, but the volume levels on the spoken parts of the track were bad. Their score? A single thumbs up from Plastique. From Middlesbrough came Aya Quinn next, dressed in Mad Hatter-esque drag and demonstrating just how crazy they could be with wild-eyed stares, reveals, pulling prosthetic skin off, and outright cries for help. Help me! What did you think of that, Penny? Even better, Aya managed to make Rory jump, which Penny listed as one of her highlights, describing it as a stellar number. Rory, while they had no idea what was going on, loved it. Would it be three thumbs up? Yes, indeed. We'll be seeing more of Aya Quinn. Reese Weatherspoon from Loughborough was up next, and while they seemed a little blue, it didn't stop them wowing the audience with an intense number. Reveal after reveal, gimmick after gimmick, I really enjoyed it, but it was a lot to take in, and I felt tired just watching it. So did they hit the mark or did they hit the deck? Plastique didn't think so, saying that they had all the gimmicks with zero substance. Rory threw a little shade by comparing it to Plastique's own performance on previous competition, Drag Idol All Stars, asking Reese whether they were in a K-hole and comparing the craziness to former finalist Stacey Wrecked. So, what were their scores? Well, before the question was even asked, Plastique responded with a thumbs down, while the other judges were more fair, with a meh from Penny and a thumbs up from Rory. She's being rather nice today, isn't she? Next up, Set Ablaze from Sunderland with their first ever performance. What a brave move to do it here in the crucible of the competition. Their look was great and their number was good and included some reveals, some saucy dance moves and some choice props. There was a narrative to the number, but the judges didn't get it. Penny saying she didn't get any of it and that Setter was probably the bottom of the leaderboard for her. Rory was more considerate, acknowledging the huge rounds of applause from the audience and stating that this might not be Setter's year, but her foot was on the ladder. Setter's performance earned her a thumbs down from Rory, which quickly changed to a meh to match the other judges. Now, proving that performers come from far and wide to compete in Newcastle Drag Idol, our next contestant was Celeste Von Claude Evergreen, who travelled up from London with a very energetic dance number. It was a very passionate performance, including both a deliberate nipple slip and some self-aware shade at Rory, with a clip of Rory criticising similar numbers from previous years, before telling the judge to piss off and going back to the same routine. Penny pointed out that she owned the stage, but the lip sync was off, and Plastique admitted that it wasn't their kind of music, but while it was kind of shit, they wanted to see more. The verdict? Two thumbs up and a meh from Penny. Another returning contestant was next, Dildo, who you might remember from last year and who had to leave the competition for personal reasons, was back to try again. 
Honestly, this was a wonderful number, telling a narrative of being rejected from re-entering and murdering all the judges in response. It was wacky and hilarious and earned her Penny T's first standing ovation of the year. Rory and Plastique loved it too, describing them as being in pole position. Unsurprisingly, the verdict was three thumbs up. After this, it was time for our only drag king of the competition, Vic the Prick, to hit the stage as a drag Marty McFly from Back to the Future, and showed off their fingering with an inflatable guitar and plenty of phallic gags. Plastique praised him for it being a very different performance from what they'd seen from him before, while Rory and Penny agreed that it was great and a fabulous drag king is exactly what the competition needed. The verdict? Another three thumbs up. Something a little different came next, and this is someone who I know well from both the Vampers Tits competition and the Bobby's Open Mic Nights. Jane Doe brought their own brand of quirkiness to the stage with a live stand-up set with a Victoria Wood-esque vibe. Sadly, it really didn't connect with the audience, with some of the self-deprecating jokes falling flat or even causing offence. Rory said it missed the mark, while Plastique stated that the ideas weren't dreadful, but that the execution was poor. Does anybody want to do it? Oh, because I can't be fucked anymore. <laughs> Live stand-up is far harder than it looks, and the verdict was a meh from each judge. Next up was 2020 returnee Miss Crystal P. Enigma, who dazzled us the last time she was in the competition with her highly poignant AIDS number. This time, she treated us to a futuristic themed outfit, a number that was riddled with well-placed tech issues, and included one of my favourite songs from the Portal 2 soundtrack. <laughs> The judges were less impressed, however, with Rory describing it as not seeming to gel and like getting socks for Christmas, and Plastique calling it robotic and not in the way she intended it to be. The verdict? Another line of meh. An absolute wildcard took to the stage next, the curiously aloof O'Lyra, with something very unique to the night, a very sad, fairly bleak number about domestic abuse and loving people that hurt you. I'm going to be honest, I spoke to O'Lyra briefly after the show, and I still can't work out whether they're putting on a character or not. The judges were fairly harsh in their critiques though, with Rory describing them as delightfully obnoxious and that her favourite part of the number was when they asked her to explain it afterwards. Penny asked whether they should get the next one on, and even Ophelia chimed in, asking whether they really thought they would get far with that number. You can watch the full show to see what you think, but it was clear they weren't going straight to week two. After a few performances that failed to hit the spot, the next contestant was a breath of fresh air. The hilariously named Airy Aschik took us through an insanely well choreographed and show-stopping performance of show tunes, including a live vocal segment. This is one you're better off just watching, but Airy gave a performance that makes queens like me want to either step up or give up. Ophelia compared them to drag legend Betty Legs Diamond, and both Rory and Plastique agreed it was their kind of thing, with Plastique asking Ophelia whether this was what she meant by traditionally modern. The result? A clear three thumbs up. Our final returner to the competition next, you will remember them from Drag Idol last year and their many residencies around the Northeast, as well as being a finalist in the MX Drag UK pageant 2022. Mercury.co.uk hit the stage in a full She-Hulk-esque bodysuit with their traditional quickfire style of performance. It was blink and you'll miss it throughout with every sci-fi reference you can think of. But what did the judges make of it? Well. Rory loved it, stating that the lip sync was flawless and that she told a good story, and while Penny stated that she adored everything Mercury does, both her and Plastique said that they knew Mercury could do better. The verdict wasn't quite the three thumbs up we expected for such a well-established local queen. Sylvia Snickers was up next, and while she looked fantastic, even I have to say it missed the mark. 
It was a lie stand-up routine that skirted the dangerous line between being too crude and not actually having enough jokes, instead betting the entire farm on one long tail. It included safe staples like grinder notification gags ha, ha, ha. Who's gonna wanna do that? and well-placed props, however, it didn't really land. Penny pointed out that she lost herself and she lost the audience, while Pastique appreciated what they tried to do and that they've got guts, but it's not the right kind of stage to do that on. The verdict? Not enough to get through. A regular on the scene, Dixon Stones was up next, with a hilarious and fairly filthy number with a unique spin on a Faith Hill song. really well edited, and for a performance this late in the night it was very... You're talking, I hate you. Engaging. One, two, three, slurp, or something like that. Yeah, Metaphorically, that. I'm going to let the DVD fuddle around in there for as long as needed, so I can say, I metaphorically saw the movie. By the end, the audience were chanting their name, and all feedback from the judges was positive, with Penny describing it as the DeLongo effect, referring to hilarious local drag legend Danny DeLonco, and how she could hear Ophelia howling in the background. Both Plastique and Rory were the same, calling her both nuts and filthy and everything they liked about Drag Idol. Unsurprisingly, the verdict was three thumbs up. What do you think about that, Dixon? Oh. <laughs> Next up was a true thing of beauty, the fabulous Ruby from Leeds, who wasn't ashamed to make herself known. What's your name? And came in, guns a-blazing, with a very well-edited track and a phenomenal lip-sync. Trust me, performances like this are not easy. The judges felt the same, but would it see them through to week two? Well, yes, with Rory even giving them two thumbs up. Our penultimate contestant, Mine Affair from Glasgow, was up next, and with true Scottish hospitality, well, that's if Pebble Dash is anything to go by, treated the judges to a round of shots, quickly remembering that Rory doesn't drink, and so doing that one herself. The performance, telling the story of a messy night out and ending in traditional McDonald's acquisition, was fun, but didn't really land with the judges. Plastique pointed out that Maya could see the same performance being executed better by previous idol winners Bonnie and Ben, while Penny said it missed the mark, but it had made them realise they wanted a McDonald's. The verdict? A meh from each judge. Finally, after 21 contestants, it was time for our last performer of the night, the fabulous Keela Sinlove. Now, this performance was good and included more comedic grinder notification gags. Oh, hang on. Dad? <laughs> While the routine was fun, it sadly failed to reclaim the audience's interest and was marred by loud chatter from the crowd. Penny pointed this out, but called it a good performance overall and that she knew they could do exceptionally well. Plastique confessed that Keela had kind of won them over and that she loved the concept, but was waiting for a bit more punch. The final verdict of the night was only one thumbs up, from Rory no less. <laughs> and wow, after all that, 22 contestants, it was nearly over. The judges had to take some time to deliberate on which of the maybes would make it through to week two, and we all caught a breath of fresh air. When they took to the stage, they asked all the contestants that hadn't gotten three thumbs up to return, and they announced that 13 contestants out of the 22 would be continuing to week two. Now, we're heading into spoiler territory here, so if you're not interested in knowing what happens before watching the full video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stop watching. Maybe make yourself a creme brulee and look on eBay for knitting patterns. With that being said, there were some big surprises here, but in the end, the ones going through were Saturn Addict, Elastique, Celeste Von Claude Evergreen, and Keela Sinlove, controversially leaving previous contestants Mercury.co.uk and Crystal P. Enigma out of the running. Now, there was a fair bit of confusion here with Ophelia calling Airy Ashcheek back to the stage even though she'd gotten automatically through, and stating that 13 contestants would go through and then only listing 12, despite counting them out. Let's give this a go. Right, Cherry Bomb's through! Saturn's through! 
through, cost of fortunes through, elastics through, aria queens through, celeste through, dildos through, vix through, aria ass cheeks through, dixies, dicks and stones is through, rubies through, and keyless through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people we've got that we put through. Whether that means there's going to be a surprise edition next week, we'll just have to wait and see. In a final surprise, however, the theme for next week of the competition would be black and white. Let's see what the contestants can do with that. And that was it. Week 1 of Drag Idol 2023 was finally done, and as the crowds dissipated, I was able to nip upstairs and get interviews with some of the contestants, despite being practically dead on my heels by this point. <laughs> First of all, I got to speak to one of the contestants that didn't make it through, the energetic Reese Weatherspoon. Right, I'm here with one of the people who didn't manage to make it through to the next week. I'm here with Reese Weatherspoons. How are you doing? Is it Weatherspoon or Weatherspoons? Weatherspoon, singular. I'm doing all right. I've, I've had better days. I'm doing all right. I mean, it's it's terrifying, isn't it? Like, you know, the, the stress of the performance and what a crazy night. How many performers did we have? 24? 23? 22, I think. Bloody hell, no. But your performance, I, I thought your performance was amazing. It was the most energetic thing I've seen. Like, what inspired that? Thank you. Um, <laughs> and you are allowed to say drugs. <laughs> drugs. I mean, drugs inspires a lot of things, I guess. I wanted to have tassels, and I was thinking of doing really long tassels, but I was like, okay, that, that's been done. So I was like, okay, I can make it a skipping rope. I just need to learn how to skip in heels. It can't be that hard. So I was practicing like every day in my flat. So whoever lives beneath me, they must hate me. So they've been hearing that every day. I, I just thought it was phenomenal. Like you, you pulled every trick out of the bag and like, I felt tired watching you. Like I felt tired already, but I felt more tired watching you. Like I, how much work did it take? Um, quite a bit. I'm, like, I made all the outfits and everything. Which it was a lot of reveals. Well done. Thank you. I, yeah, I do like a bit of Velcro. So what are your plans for the future? Where can people find you? Um, in Newcastle, I do a lot of the open drag nights at Bobby's every other Wednesday. Uh, I'm based in Loughborough. I do a lot in Loughborough. I do a lot in York as well. No, that sounds good. No, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you so much for having me. Then, of course, I caught up with the comeback queen herself, Costa Fortune, to see how finally getting through to week two felt. Oh, I'm here with the wonderful Costa Fortune. You've managed to scrape it through this week. I'm very happy. Three thumbs. Yeah. I like that twist as well. I don't know if it'll be every week or just week one, but it was nice to know, like, because I was fifth, nice to know I could just relax the rest of the evening rather than stress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was phenomenal. Like, it, it's the sort of thing where obviously you were one of the people that probably shouldn't have gone home week one like, last year because we've seen you at the open drag we've seen how phenomenal you can be and it was kind of wonderful seeing the judges go oh maybe we made a mistake you know but no, how does how does it feel uh, getting through to week two well that was going into this i was like i just want to beat last year so week one was very easy girl um and then just to hear like the good critiques was like not, over, not overwhelmed, but like surprising in a way because I was like, did not get this last year, um, not felt this before. Um, so yeah, it was just like, it's nice and it's like, got more to do, I can more show more now. I don't think they were wrong sending me home because I was only like last year because I was only two months into it. Now I've had the year to grow, I got a lot more, I know more about who I am and I feel ready. No, no, that's it. I mean, and the number as well. I love that. It was so funny. Like, what inspired it? Um, so I've done a performance as a librarian before um, in, like, September time. And I just took the character and made it more current with the Harry book. So I heard that on TikTok and I was just like, well, that's camp. Uh, that needs to be a drag performance. <laughs> so I just did that. I was like, find the songs that go with it. It's great. So, do you have any ideas for what you're going to do for black and white next week? 
It's, quite, it's not a theme we've had before, so it's a bit of a shake-up. It's quite vague. I could do like a black and white movie or lean into the football, but I'm not really a football fan, so I'm not sure I'll do that. Um, but yeah, like, I think... I'm not sure, actually. I'll have a think. Yeah. I'll have a think and I'll get to it. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much for speaking to me, Costa Fortune, and good luck in the competition. Thank you, Velvet. <laughs> Finally, I got to speak to the wild card of the night, O'Lyra, for some insight into their world, I guess. Right, here's another of our contestants that unfortunately didn't get through to week two. I'm here with O'Lyra. How are you doing? <sighs> yeah. Are you sad? Are you happy? Are you relieved? I've never been sadder. I've never been through anything more sad in my life. I'm really sad that you have to be talking to me right now. <laughs> well, I, I, I might have been interviewing you for getting through. But you're not. <laughs> that is a point. <laughs> so how long have you been doing drag? Um, I've been doing drag since I was born. <laughs> yeah, which was like, That's a 10, long years time, ago, yeah. like 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So you're 10? I'm 11 and a half. You look very good for 10 or 11. You know. <laughs> That's what they all say. <laughs> That's what the doctors say. <laughs> so what are your plans for the future after Drag Idol? Just really want to get some onion rings. It's a definite move. World and save the world. And save the onion rings and save the world. It's just the plans. <laughs> the plan that be, the plan that God gave to me when I was only one years old. One thing about me is I'm really, really smart. Yeah. And that's your lot. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this far. I'll be back next week for another episode of Snatch Talk. But before I go, I just want to thank everyone who helped me out on the night when I was having some camera trouble, including Nia T. Cleaver, Joni Crump, and the devil herself, Risqué. Now, I'll leave you with some wise words from Miss Rory. Goodbye. Wonderful snatch talk. Is that right? Snatch talk. You must view it. In fact, if you're watching this now, you already are viewing it, so you've been sucked in by it. <laughs>